So pretty recently, on a whim, I decided to watch Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated. I just wanted to watch some cartoons, didn't have anything specific that I wanted to watch, and given recent events, <clears throat> I wanted to watch something lighthearted and fun with low stakes that I haven't really watched before, while also being something with just a bit of story for me to sink my teeth into. I didn't really want to watch a monolith of a show like Pokemon or Spongebob with hundreds upon hundreds of episodes. I just wanted to watch a series with beginning, middle, and end that won't just make me feel dreadful and empty inside when I'm done. You know, since so many cartoons have no ending or very disappointing ones. And I heard good things about the show. I keep up with what's going on in television animation a lot of the time. I'm a simple soul. If I see something interesting on here about Scooby-Doo, I'll click. So I had a pretty good idea of what I was getting into. What it was, and in spite of a number of misgivings that I have about the show, as a whole, I actually really liked it. I liked it so much, in fact, that I was already planning on making another video about the show and was writing a script for that before I was seized by the need to write this one. So look forward to that sometime in the future, I guess. But after watching Mystery Incorporated and due to recent events... <sighs> Hey, what do you two think you're doing? Having a little snack. Duh. No eating in the van. Eating leads to crumbs. Crumbs lead to germs. Germs lead to sick days from work, secretly crippling the nation's economy. Ha. <laughs> ah, stupid, naive, fake Fred. If only you knew. If only you could have known. You fucking bastard. I don't exactly have anything better to do, so I decided to go back and watch the old episodes from the 60s. And here's the thing. I actually kind of really love 60s television. Sure, a lot of it is cheesy and schlocky as hell, and those kinds of shows probably would not entertain a modern audience. Doctor Who's 12-part epic, The Daleks' Master Plan, I am looking at you. And in a lot of ways, they don't really hold up today against more modern shows, but at the same time, these kinds of shows also have a real charm to them. They're earnest and often have some pretty decent writing going into them. And at the very least, if the writing is bad, it usually still remains pretty entertaining, even if it's only because of how fucking dumb it is. And as for Scooby-Doo, well, I've always had a certain fondness for the show. I actually remember watching the old episodes from the 60s, and I pretty much grew up on it. Somehow, even as a kid who had more modern and probably better shows to watch, I still remember loving the old episodes. I remember sometimes watching What's New Scooby-Doo on TV. My mom certainly liked it. And as it was the only Scooby-Doo movie that we own on VHS, Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost will always hold a very special place in my heart. Mmm, Thorn. Ugh. Ben Ravencroft. Mmm, they hot. And so I thought that going back to watch the old show would be a nice little trip of nostalgia, even though I actually remember very little of the show from my childhood. But as I was watching the episodes, I started to realize, yes, I was enjoying myself, but there was also something more going on. I just really need more. I just need Scooby-Doo in my life right now. Let's all be honest with ourselves for a second. The world right now, it's just a complete and utter fucking shit show. We've got a pandemic on our hands, and the American federal leadership has been bafflingly incompetent in every single way conceivable. In fact, they are so incompetent that they have managed to fail its people in ways that I didn't even think were possible. What? What do you mean Donald Trump crashed the stock market? What? He did it twice? How the fuck is that even possible? I don't understand! The US president doesn't have anything to do with the stock market! Things just constantly feel on edge as everyone is caught up in a perpetual state of restrained anxiety while also simultaneously having a strange sense of uneasy calm. It feels like we should be panicking, but at the same time, it feels like we just need to relax until all of this blows over. Either way, it feels like we are both doing too much 
and not enough all at once. But then again, what do I know? I'm depressed as fuck. Don't tend to go outside much anyway. And due to circumstances that were out of mine or my family's control, I have some deep-seated trauma and so am in a constant state of apathy as I find that my emotions have long burned themselves out entirely as a defense mechanism, leaving behind only the echo of how I imagine normal people feel. But even before this whole pandemic, things in the world are just constantly so bad. The pandemic has just ripped these systemic wounds wide open and laid them bare for all to see. The lack of universal healthcare in this country, people's lack of financial security, homelessness, the incompetence and malice of those in charge, and their sheer inability to do anything that resembles leadership, it's all been torn wide open. But then there's also the cavalcade of other problems that we've been dealing with. Global warming, refugees, natural disasters, corporate greed, police violence, school shootings, the resurgence of Nazism, Nazi ideology, the widening gap between the rich and the poor. Right now, everything out there in the world is terrible and scary, and honestly, it just makes me want to shut down and cry. And I mean, in a lot of ways, it has done exactly that to me. Because of the absolute garbage fire that is the world right now, I lost a lifelong passion. I used to actually like politics and talking about politics, you know? All that I have ever wanted to do is to serve the people of this nation. But now, politics? I just can't fucking stand it. I can't stand to hear about it anymore. And every time it comes up in conversation, I just want whoever is trying to talk about it to shut the fuck up. For my own sake and for the sake of my mental health, I just can't bring myself to listen to it. Because it just makes me mad. It makes me feel powerless. And that feeling just makes me want to kill myself. But I can't. I don't want to. I shouldn't want to. I must not listen to it lest the noose around my throat wraps itself tighter. But I loved politics. I still love it in a lot of ways. I loved looking at systems of governance and trying to understand all the little ways that they work. The state of the world right now has just rubbed on me. Over and over and over and over and over again until that rubbing made my skin raw, creating a rug burn which became a wound that cannot be healed. And now... Now I'm just so damn lost. What am I supposed to do? I don't know. I'm just groping around in the darkness, hoping to find something. Anything. Even a wall to help me find a way to go someplace new. But I am finding nothing. I am empty. And I am hopeless. I can't help people in the way I wanted to because it just hurts too much. I don't know where to turn anymore. I'm just so tired of bleeding out on the forum floor with no one who can help me in the way that I need. And it hurts. But then, there's Scooby-Doo. We all know Scooby-Doo. Just about every kid in America grew up on it in some capacity. The show has been on the air basically non-stop since it was first released in 1969 as one of Hanna-Barbera's best and most important works, leaving an imprint on television animation that is still felt to this day. It's silly and dumb and simple. Four teenage friends and their dog driving around, solving mysteries, catching criminals, and participating in all kinds of silly hijinks along the way. And I love it. And re-watching these old episodes? It's comforting. The world of Scooby-Doo is one in which everything bad that happens, it happens for a reason. And that reason is always a person. Whenever the gang comes across something bad going down, the victims may say it's a ghost or a monster or aliens or a number of other things that go bump in the night. But the moment you think about it, and the moment you look more deeply into it, even if it's just for a few minutes, you start to realize. Behind all of the theatrics, everything that happens can be explained and all of it is caused by a person. It's always a person pulling the strings in the end. Not some unknowable force of nature or being beyond our moral comprehension, but a person. It may sometimes be a magical person, but it is always a person nevertheless. The real mystery is in who that person is and how and why they did it. While the who and the how changes from episode to episode, mystery to mystery, the reason why is almost always the same. Namely, the culprit is just a greedy, selfish asshole. Money, fame, power, revenge, control, driving out the competition. So often, the reasons are the same. It's just simply greed. And in the end, the gang always exposes the criminal for who they are, and they receive their due punishment. Presumably, at least. I don't think that we ever see the trials, but I think it's pretty safe to assume that the criminals get their due. And I just wish that I could be there. Isn't it a nice thought 
to live in a world where people can see that every bad thing that happens is because of or is exacerbated by greedy, selfish people. And wouldn't it be wonderful to live in a world in which those greedy, selfish people are always brought to justice and are always punished for their crimes? And wouldn't it be nice to live in a world where critical thinking always wins the day and helps get the criminal captured? I want to live in that kind of world. I need to hope that a world like this can exist. Because in the end, the world of Scooby-Doo isn't a fantastical one at all. Sure, it has talking dogs and an occasional magic or monster, but in the end, its reality is really a lot like our own. Yeah, the pandemic wasn't the fault of any human, but how the sickness has been spread and the resulting aftermath? That is entirely caused by people. Global warming is caused and perpetuated by greedy, selfish corporations who refuse to change their ways, hold us captive in forced complacency, and then shift the blame to us, the people, when in reality, we have no true power or choice. All the problems that we face are caused by people. And I just wish that I could live in a world where those people responsible were actually held to account for their actions. But we don't live in that world now, do we? Could we? Absolutely. Are we? No. And through all of this, I have Scooby-Doo, a hopelessly optimistic children's cartoon where the smart good guys always win and the bad guys always lose. I don't just like Scooby-Doo. I really do love the silly little cartoon. And for now, I need it. I need to believe that the world can be better. I want to be in a world where friendship and critical thought always prevails, where justice is always served. I need to believe it can exist, even if it's only for 20 minutes at a time. I need it. And that's just how it is. This world that we live in, it's burned the heart out of me. I'm tired and I'm hurt. The world has taken so much from me. But watching Scooby-Doo, it's like aloe vera on a wound. It's calming. It's soothing. It makes me hope. It makes me believe that things will get better. And with how burned out I am, I need anything that can help ease the pain that I can get. We've got to figure some way out of this mess. Any suggestions? But why not try what I've always done in an emergency? What's that? Panic. Hey there, it's me, Maniac. So, uh, did I succeed in making the edgiest essay about Scooby-Doo that exists on YouTube? Probably. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. In any case, uh, I just wanted to come in here at the end to say a few words. Uh, I just want to let you all know that while yes, I am really depressed as fuck, that I do have a therapist and I do take antidepressants, so you don't need to worry about me. I'm not actually particularly suicidal or anything like that, so you don't need to worry about this being some sort of horrible essay cry for help thing. I just wanted to get these feelings out there because I feel a lot of frustration towards everything that, you know, goes on in this society of ours. And I just had to say something about it. It's, it's cathartic, you know. This video took a long time to make for just no fucking reason. Well, I have a reason, but it's not good. They're not, <laughs> they're really dumb reasons, but they're reasons, I guess. Uh, <laughs> this probably was not a fun video to watch. This was probably depressing as hell. Um, I know that, I acknowledge that. Yeah, it's certainly a thing, isn't it? I don't know why you would like this video, but uh, I hope you did in some capacity. I don't know, maybe it, it give, provides some insight into my depressed as hell mind and how, you know, this whole pandemic thing has affected my dumb mass. Also, thank you for watching, I guess. Until next time, yeah, don't worry about me, I'm I'm doing fine. I, don't worry, I have therapy. Um, I'll be fine. So yeah, until next time, uh, yeah, bye!